Hello everyone. Happy Tuesday. It's time for a special episode of Tuesday Live at 5. This is Lena Gersa. I am now on summer holidays. I'm an independent uh, Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Cambridge, Ontario, Canada. I'm just a little bit excited about the end of the school year. Uh, in case you haven't noticed and you don't know, I am a high school music teacher and in my day job. My fun job is stamping up. Not that teaching music isn't fun, but you know what I mean. Um, so I am so excited. I finished work today at 2.15 and I am officially on summer holidays. So now I get to focus on my one job, my one job that I love so much, and that is stamping up. So I am so <laughs> relieved. Uh, it's been a really, really difficult school year, and uh, I am so happy to be done. Uh, we actually got to do some planning for September. We actually know what the first day of school is going to look like for the first time in three years. We know what the first week is going to look like. I already know when I'm teaching. This hasn't happened in three years as, uh, in the education system here, so... It actually feels like it's going to be a restful summer, and I am so excited. So today, to celebrate that, I have a special extended uh, episode of Tuesday Live at 5 for you, and I am all about my new One Sheet Wonder. So I love designing One Sheet Wonders. They're really, really fun, and I, I love the challenge. It's kind of like a puzzle when you have a 12 by 12 sheet of DSP, and you can cut it up any way you like and, and design projects. So I have a brand new one for you. And um, I will post not only the cutting layout, but a, P a PDF that has all of the other measurements for you with photos of each card in the uh, video description when I'm done, okay? So you don't have to take notes, you don't have to try to write things down or take screenshots or whatever. Um, it will all be posted free to download, okay? There'll, there'll be two PDFs, one will be the cutting layout, the other will be measurements for all the other parts and pieces and photos of each card, okay? So just sit back and enjoy, watch me craft. I'm gonna go pretty quickly, so don't even attempt <laughs> to make these along with me because it's gonna be too fast. Um, but the, that's what replays are for, right? And once you have all the um, sort of big picture of how to cut your DSP and all of your pieces, then you can craft your heart's delight. All right. Okay. So let me flip. Actually, let me first see who's here. <coughs> oh, sorry. Something caught in my throat. Let's take a quick sip. All right. Who is here? <coughs> Goodness me. <coughs> oh, sorry, folks. That's crazy. Okay, who's here? We have, oh, we got lots of people here. Hi, Tracy and Louise and Deb and Krista. Hi, Pam. Thanks for sharing, Pam. Hi, Laura. Oh, hi, Judy. Hi, Linda. Thanks so much. Hi, Penny. Glad you could join me. Hi, Gail. Thanks for joining me today. All right, so enough talking. Um, I'm going to kind of explain as I go what I'm doing here. And uh, thanks, Lee. I'm really happy to be on summer holidays. I can't even tell you. Um, and three years from now, I'm going to be even happier because I'll be retired on top of that. <laughs> Let the, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Um, okay, so I'm going to flip and we are going to get to it. And uh, I hope you enjoy. Okay, sit back. I hope you got a nice, cool beverage. Uh, this is going to be longer than normal. Okay? All right, here we go. <clears throat> All right, that looks good. Hey, Michelle, thank you. You have no idea. Actually, you do know how relieved I am to be off. All right, so I've been posting um, the samples that I made, that I the, the one that I actually, my original samples as I was designing this one sheet wonder. And um, they were all using the Awash with Beauty designer series paper, which was what I featured in last week's video. So today I'm actually going to be featuring, all the cards I'm gonna be making, are using this pattern from the Hues of Happiness DSP pack, okay? I love this pattern. Love the florals, I love the differences in color. And then of course the back side has a simpler pattern which works really, really well with the busy front side. So that's, this is the pattern I'm going to be using, okay? Now I've already gone ahead and cut all the pieces using this paper, but I am gonna show you how to do the cuts using a different DSP pack that um, I will then make the cards up for and I will share them next week. Okay, so the DSP pack that I'm using is a new one coming in celebration, and that is, what's it called? I don't even know. Wonderful World. So it's this gorgeous 
DSP pack. It actually comes with a stamp set in a bundle. This is a level two item. Love, 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 love this paper. So I'm going to be um, showing how to cut your 12 by 12 DSP using this pattern. And then I'm going to make up some cards probably tomorrow because, hey, I don't have to work. Um, I will make up the cards using the pieces that I cut and I will post them this week or next week, next week. Okay. So you're going to see me cutting this DSP to demonstrate how to do the, the one sheet wonder, but you're going to see me making cards with this pattern. Okay. I just don't want to confuse everybody. <laughs> All right. So, um, I've printed off the cutting template. Now my printer needs to have the heads clean. So there's some missing bits and pieces. It will print better if you have a good printer, uh, but it is a PDF. So you can download this. Um, I will post it, as I said, in the video description after, um, I'm done here and I have some dinner. Okay. So a couple of really important points here. First of all, if you're using a directionally specific DSP, that means if, you know, like this pattern, you want the flowers to be growing up. You don't want them to be growing sideways, right? So you want to make sure you start with your DSP right side up. Okay, that's rule number one. Number two, you want to make sure that you follow the order of cuts here. So I've got colored lines to show what order to do your cuts. And I'm going to do them in this, that order right now. Okay. So that's really important. <laughs> Otherwise it won't work for you. Okay. So I'm going to bring in my trusty trimmer here. And the first cut is actually going to cut from the right side um, at one and one eighth inches. Okay. So I'm actually going to use my right side ruler here on my trimmer. I love that our trimmer has rulers on both sides. So I'm cutting at one and one eighths. Okay. And my second cut, I'm going to cut again at one and one eighths. Okay. So these are both on the right side of my DSP. Okay. So I'm going to set those two strips aside. We're going to use those on a project, actually on two projects. And my next cut, I'm now going to go to the left side and I'm going to cut vertically at four inches. Okay. I'll set that one aside. Now I'm actually going to rotate. I'm going to cut horizontally at four inches. So set that one at four. Okay. I'm going to cut again at four. And then this last one, I'll show you how to cut. So I've cut three pieces all the same at four inches. Okay, so those are your sort of first five cuts that are really, really crucial. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to those first um, two strips that I cut, those one and one eighth inch strips. And now I'm going to cut these down. So the first one, I'm going to cut at four and one eighth. The next one is going to be at three and five eighths. And the next one is going to be at three and one eighth. Okay. This little scrap is garbage. Okay. So there are my three pieces from that first strip. The second strip that was one and one eighth, I'm going to cut the first one at five and a half. The next one is at two and five eighths. And then at two and one eighth. Okay. Now this little scrap, if you really want to keep it, you can. I didn't use it, um, and I've marked it as scrap on my cutting guide. Okay. So we have five strips. One, two, three, four, five. They're all the same width. They're differing lengths. That is going to be for one card. This is going to be for another card. This five and a half inch piece. Okay. Then going back to my third cut was at four inches. So now I'm going to rotate this. I'm going to cut this at five and a quarter. So I'm making a standard card front panel. Okay. And then I'm going to cut at three inches. And this last one left will be three and a quarter. Three and a quarter? No, it should be three and three quarters. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so there are my next three pieces. Okay, these are all going to be for different cards. And then finally, we had these three um, pieces that we cut on the horizontal. This one we're actually going to leave as is. Okay, this next one we're going to cut down to five and a quarter. 
So that's going to give us a horizontal card print. Okay, this little strip I actually saved to use on the inside of a project. Okay, and then the last one, this last piece, I'm going to cut at three and a half. Okay, and then this piece is left over as well. It's actually two by four. I actually debated whether or not to design another card using this little piece, but I really like to have extra little strips to add to the insides of my cards. So I decided to keep that as what as it was and use it for um, embellishing the insides of my cards. Okay, so that's it. That's all the cutting for this one sheet wonder. All right. Okay, now. Um, I should also mention, um, I used, for all of my sentiments, for all my cards, I used the Charming Sentiments Bundle. Now, this bundle is awesome sauce. I love it because um, I love fussy cut sentiments. And if you love the look of fussy cut sentiments but don't like the fussy cutting part, this bundle is for you. Because you stamp your sentiment and then there is a coordinating die to cut it out. Now, are these, these aren't quite at 100%, so this won't quite line up. But to give you an idea, you'll see in a second that is going to cut that one out. So each stamp has a coordinating die. On top of that, we have these other awesome um, dies that can be used to make candles and bows and cards and hearts. So it is a fantastic bundle. If you haven't checked that out, it's in the new annual catalog. You're going to want to have a look at that. Okay. All right. Let's get to it. So the first card we're going to make follows this layout. Okay. So this is um, again, this, I, this is the, my original sample that I made using the Awash in Beauty designer series paper. I'm going to make a sample or a card using this gorgeous hues of happiness. Okay. So the only additional piece I need for this card is my card base. Um, I've already stamped in and die cut, not fussy cut my sentiment. Okay. And then in addition, ahead of time, I cut out a whole ton of the gorgeous flowers from another pattern in this DSP pack. So these, most of these die cut are I coordinate with the dies that are part of the suite. So I just cut a whole bunch out and then I have lots to choose from as I'm designing my cards. Okay. Um, that's something I really recommend when you're designing, when you're doing a one sheet wonder, or you want to do a whole batch of cards using a particular product, having a whole lot of little bits and pieces to play with is really easy. That the other thing that I did, when I was designing these is I stamped one of every sentiment and die cut it so that I had lots of choices to play with. It makes design really easy when you have lots of bits and pieces to try. Okay. All right. So for this card, I'm using that uh, five and three quarter by four inch piece. And for this one, you have options. So I am actually going to tear this. If you don't like tearing your DSP, if that bothers you, you can cut it. Okay. But I'm going to tear it just because I like that look and it's quicker and easier <laughs> and I'm a little bit lazy. Um, so we're just going to tear this. It's about maybe inch and a half, inch and three quarters in from that left edge. Okay. This is called the rip and flip trick. All right. So then I'm just going to take and flip over my DSP and I'm good to go. Now, if you have a directionally specific pattern on the back as well as the front, this rip and flip will not work. Okay, I'm just going to give you that warning. Um, so for example, here, it did not work because both sides of the DSP were directionally specific. So I actually ended up cutting and, and gluing it. Okay, all right. So I'm going to fold my card base in half. This is just a standard uh, five and a half by eight and a half inch card base. Where is my bone folder? There it is. <clears throat> and I'm just going to go ahead and glue these down. Now you can decide if you like which, which, which pattern you want to see more of. I actually want to see more for this one of the lighter pattern, just because I'm going to put flowers over top and I don't want them to sort of get lost in the busyness of the DSP. So we're going to go ahead and glue this down. When I'm doing this, I like to use liquid glue just so I can get things lined up just so. So we're going to glue that on here. This is granny apple green cardstock. I should mention you can use whatever color you like. Basically, you're just going to pull your colors from your DSP. And then we're going to add this guy on top. So this is the only part you have to really be careful. Um, you want to make sure that your borders are the same and that your edges on the sides line up. Okay. Just to get a nice clean look. 
Okay, so that's it. How simple is that? Now we get to play with a little floral arranging. And I know some of you hate floral arranging, but I love it. And so I've got lots of little bits here that I can choose from. Let's take one of these and one of these. And what do we got? We got the lighter purple. I just love playing. Oh, let's use a partial flower. I love using little bits and pieces that otherwise would get thrown out. Um, just to show that, you know, you can use those little bits. And they do work. All right, so let's see what we can do here. So how perfect would that be right there? Let's just do that. And we'll add that there. And we'll add that there. And we'll add a leaf there. And maybe a leaf there. And there we go. Okay, and then our sentiment is going to go right there. All right, that works for me. Hope it works for you. Let's glue her down. <laughs> um, the beauty, like I said, the beauty of having all these bits and pieces cut out um, means that you can just kind of play around and design stuff and there's not really a wrong way to do it because it's flowers, right? Flowers grow any which way. All right. Oh, we got lots of people joining us. Hi, Connie. Hi, June. Hi, Wendy. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Charlene. Thanks for joining me today and helping me ring in summer as I finish work for the school year. Uh, quite happy to be done. So for those of you who are joining late, this is my new one sheet wonder. And I am going to be posting all of the measurements, the cutting template, all the information you need to be able to try this on your own um, after the, the broadcast, okay? So it should go up, I'm going to guess, probably by 7. Um, I have to eat dinner first. But <laughs> um, as soon as I'm done, I will post that. Do I want to put that there? No, nope, I think I'm just going to leave that just like that and we're going to put our no we need one more flower there what are we going to do let's add let's add another small no what are we going to do what are we going to do what are we going to do we need a small yellow one that's what we need what have we got do 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 i don't have a small yellow one all right let's try something else what do we got? Oh, we got a small little purple one. Let's put that right there. That works. Yellow would have been good, but purple works too. So we'll add this little guy right here. There we go. That's better. And then we'll add our sentiment. And Bob's your uncle. We're done. Super quick. Oh, Louise, flower arranging is easy. You just can't get inside your own head. You just got to go with it. So we'll pop that on there. Now I did on my sample actually have a little something up top too. What do we got here? Maybe we'll tuck this guy in here. No, I can see that it's not complete. What do we got? Oh, those would be pretty. Should we pop those on there? Hmm. The thing is about the thing about floral arranging. There we go. That's what we need. Paper floral arranging, I should say, is that there's not really a wrong way to do it. You just play until you have something that you like, right? Um, so it's not there. Oh, I'm liking that. There we go. All right. Now, for embellishments, um, on my Awash and Beauty samples, I used the um, iridescent pearls. I'm going to use the coordinating embellishments from the Hues of Happiness suite. So for this one, I think we're going to use some um, pretty purple because purple is good and purple is what this one is all about and I love these little embellishments because they come in three sizes right so it makes it really easy all right there we go card number one is done so there it is in the awash with beauty and there is hues of happiness okay all right number one done and done no problem Krista have fun at Costco I'm gonna be there tomorrow morning all right Next up is this card. Okay. Um, so again, we're going to do it using the Hues of Happiness. So this one, I love this layout because you use very little designer paper, but it's, it, it has more impact because we're going to cut it up. So you may recall that three by four inch piece. Uh, let me see where it is here in my, there it is. It, this is what I demonstrated when I cut it. So this three by four inch piece, we're actually going to cut into four one inch strips. So we're going to take this piece and we're just going to cut into four one inch strips. The thing here is you want to make sure you keep them in order because we want it to look like we want the image to be continuous. Okay. 
So one, two, and three, four. Okay, so keep them in order. This one's especially hard if you get them out of order. It's kind of like a really hard jigsaw puzzle to put together. All right, so there are my four pieces. Now, the only additional pieces we're gonna need here, again, we need a card base. I used Melon Mambo here. And then we have two additional pieces. Now, I don't remember the measurements of these. because <laughs> I didn't write them down. They are in the um, PDF, so I'm not gonna worry too much about giving you the measurements right now. Um, so you're gonna need a colored um, piece to put as your mat behind your strip. So we're gonna go ahead and kind of layer those on and sort of figure out the spacing before we glue them down. Okay, so you just kind of want to play around with getting them spaced equidistantly so that when you go to glue it, you kind of know where you're gluing them. Okay, so for this, anytime I've got, you know, to be a little bit precise with where I'm gluing, I like to use liquid glue just to have that wiggle time. So we'll put this one down first, and I just want to try to have an equal border top, bottom, and side. And you do get a little wiggle time. You don't get a ton. It does set up fairly quickly. So you just want to make sure you get that right. Okay. And then we're going to work our way across. So we'll take this one next. So again, try to get them spaced equally. And then this guy. And then finally, this guy's gonna go on. There we go. Okay, um, so that is our first layer. And then we're gonna go ahead and layer that onto a white mat. And I like the white because when I put it on the melon, it just pops, right? If I were to just go ahead and do that, it doesn't have the same impact. So having that extra layer of white, I feel really adds an awful lot to the impact of the design. So we're gonna just layer that on here. And again, all of these measurements will be on the PDF that I will post after the video. Okay, so there's our mat, and then we're going to take our card base, which again is five and a half by eight and a half, scored in the middle at four and a quarter, and then we're going to go ahead and layer that on there. Now, on my sample, I did use a little bit of linen thread. I'm actually going to use a little bit of this pretty um, pool party ribbon on here, because pool party is in the DSP. So, we're going to add with my glue dots. There they are. So we're going to add a glue dot to one end and we're going to add that on there. I didn't bring my ribbon scissors, shame on me. So we'll add that there. You can use twine, linen thread, whatever works for you. Um, I like this ribbon because it's very sheer and it doesn't have, it doesn't add a lot of weight to the card, right? Not, I'm talking visual weight, physical weight too, but I'm talking visual weight. So we're gonna go ahead and glue that down. So we will add a little bit of adhesive here. And we're gonna pop that on to the front of our card. Now, this design does not have equal borders, top, sides, and bottom. So top and bottom are gonna be the same and side to side is gonna be the same, but they're not gonna be the same all the way around. Okay, just a little note there. And now we're gonna bring in some pink flowers because they're pretty. So let's put a pink one there. Maybe, no, nope, that's gonna be too big. Do I have any more? I don't have any more small yellow ones. I should have cut more small yellow ones. What else have we got? Let me get some more leaves. Let's throw in a little bit of a blue one and go with a lighter pink. Ooh, I like that. Let's add this guy, and we'll add this guy down here. Actually, do I have, no, we'll stick with this one. All right, that's it, and we're gonna add some leaves, and we're done. Okay, so we're gonna put this one flat. It's gonna go up here. We're gonna pop this guy up. Yeah. 
Yeah, Lois, it is a beautiful set. I love it too. I I knew as soon as I saw this DSP that I was going to want to do a one sheet wonder with it. So here you go. Um, it is really gorgeous paper. So there is that one. And then we're going to add some leaves here. I'm going to add a couple of mini dimensionals to the leaves. So there we go. I'll tuck this one in here. And then let's add a little branch. Maybe up here. Yep. I think I can get away with a big one on there. So we'll pop that one in there. And there we go. Now we need our sentiments. So for this one, I used the wishing you the happiest of birthdays. So that is going to go sort of across the front, but I'm not, I'm not going to cover the ribbon. I'm going to overlap it a little bit, but not completely cover it because we want to see that beautiful ribbon. So I'm just going to add a couple of dimensionals here and then we'll add a mini. It's almost time for a new sheet of minis here. And then I'm going to add just a smidge of tape where it's going to overlap my popped flower. So we'll get rid of those backings and pop that on just like that. And then of course we need a bow because the ribbon does not look complete without a bow. So we'll tie up a quick little bow here. This ribbon is the easiest bow making ribbon ever. So, so easy. I love it too, Deb, and it's great to do both sides, right? You probably recognize the layout from, I think I did it in Bingo maybe, one of the make and takes, um, but it was oriented on the right side. But the cool thing is you can do mirror image. You can even do it vertically as well. Um, it's a great layout and it uses so little DSP. That's the beauty of it. So it's a great way to get a lot of wow for not a lot of paper. All right, so let's add a glue, a glue dot to our bow here. And then we're gonna pop that on right in the corner. There we go. Okay, so different look, but same layout. Okay, so that is number two. All right, I gotta speed things up here. We're gonna be here till midnight. You guys are going to miss your dinner. All right, next up, we have this pretty one. So this one uh, is going to use one of our vertically oriented four by five and a quarter inch pieces, and we're going to do a little bit of cutting to get sort of the patchwork look, okay? So um, I've got my vertically oriented four by five and a quarter inch piece, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut vertically at two inches, Okay, I'm going to cut horizontally at two inches on both pieces. So let's cut another two inch piece here. Okay, so now I end up with two two by two inch and two two by three and a quarter. Okay, so then to create our patchwork, we need our card base. So our card base this time is a, a four and a quarter by 11 inch scored in the middle at five and a half. So I have my card base here. And then we get to play around and decide how we want this to go. So if we want to see more of the flowers, we can do it this way. Okay, so we're going to offset it. So our two by two squares are in opposite corners. Okay, if we like that. Or if you want to see less of the flowers and more of the little cross hatching on the back, you can do it that way. It's totally up to you. Um, it's just a matter of preference. Depends how much you love the pattern that's on the back side, really, <laughs> I think. Okay, so I think I'm going to go with this. I, I like this cross hatch pattern, but I like the flowers more. So that's what we're going to do. So then it's just a matter of gluing these on. So I'm going to go ahead and start in one corner. And I want to make sure I glue these again so I have an equal border onto the two sides that border the edge of the card. And then, whoops, don't you move. And then this one's going to get butt right up against it, okay? And I want to make sure they line up so I have even edges. So we're going to add this guy. Just like that. Okay, then we're going to add this one in this corner. Oh, 
Oops, I wasn't quite centered. Let's see if we can still wiggle those over. Can we? Oh, come on, you can do it. See what I mean about the ability to adjust <laughs> with liquid glue? It's a beautiful thing. There we go, that's better. And then one more in the top right corner. So again, we just wanna butt those pieces right up against each other. Now, do you see how this one didn't quite line up so that's not quite flush? Okay, do you see how there's a, that's not quite even? Um, we're actually gonna hide that fast and I'm gonna tuck this underneath here just a smidge. It's not gonna be noticeable uh, because we're gonna put our floral arrangement over top and you won't notice it. Okay, so there is our patchwork card front. And again, now it's just a matter of arranging flowers. So I'm gonna use a big yellow one in the middle here. And what else have we got? I love just being able to pull a whole bunch of die cut flowers out and play around. Let's see if I have a yellow one that's better centered because that one's not very cut very centered. And then let's add one of these guys. We can hide the fact that it's only a partial one. And then I had another partial one up here. That one's not gonna get hidden very well. Let's add this one. And then maybe a little bit of the pink. Do I want more pink? What am I missing? I'm missing the blue, that's what I'm missing. So let's maybe add this guy here and one of these guys down here. Nope, you know what, that's enough. We'll add some leaves to fill it out. Okay, so again, um, you can pop up as much as you want or glue it flat. I think I'm gonna pop all of this. Um, just a tip, when you are doing this kind of floral arranging, um, you just wanna make sure that you leave the edges unglued. And that's going to allow you to um, tuck things underneath and sort of get that depth and dimension when you're arranging. Um, I tend to do that all the time when I'm arranging um, die cut florals and it really gives you a lot more flexibility as you're designing. Okay, so this guy is actually, I'm gonna glue to the edge of my yellow flower just so that I get the positioning right because I don't wanna see that straight cut edge. And then we're gonna pop the whole shebang up. And maybe one more. And we'll get rid of our backings. And then that's gonna go right there, just like that. Okay, and then we're gonna add a couple extra sprigs of leaves. So we'll add this guy here. So I'm just gonna tuck that in under there. And we'll maybe add one of these up here. No, it needs to be down here, I think. Yep, it does. So let's, I think I can get away with a, oh, nope, that's too big. We'll put a couple minis on there instead. So we'll add that right there. And we're golden, okay? Now the sentiment for this one, if I can find it here, it, it just says congratulations. So this works for anything, right? Um, now the other thing that I did is I took a little bit of ribbon. So I'm gonna come back to my um, pool party sheer ribbon. I'm gonna tie a bow. So we're gonna add a little bow here. I thought this would make a really pretty wedding card. So we'll tie your little bow. <laughs> it's okay, Betty, that's what replays are for. I'm glad you made it. Um, so for those of you that are just tuning in, this is my um, new one sheet wonder. Um, so I've been posting projects all weekend that feature the Awash and Beauty DSP, which I featured last week. Um, but this week I am making my cards with hues of happiness because I want to show how easy it is to kind of replicate these no matter what DSP you have, right? It, you can use this um, One Sheet Wonder template with any DSP. So I'm just finishing up my third card here. So I'm just going to take and add a glue dot to the back of my sentiment and then that is going to get glued right across the front of the flower. So I'm going to put another glue dot on the back of my bow. And then I'm gonna add a little smidge of liquid glue to my die cut sentiment. And that is just going to lay right across the front of my card, just like that. 
Okay, so there you go. Card number three, done and done. All right, rolling along, here we go. <laughs> I'm not cleaning up in between because I'm gonna use all these little bits and pieces eventually anyway. All right, number four, another super quick and easy one is this one. So this one, this pattern uh, or this paper pack has these, this one page that has all these gorgeous sprays of flowers. And as is always the case, when they cut the paper, some of the um, pattern gets cut off. So what I did is I, I didn't want to waste those beautiful partial ones that were along the straight edge. So I just chose one and fussy cut it out to use and just had it growing off from the side of my card. So I thought that totally worked. So again, another little tip for how to use um, sort of the edges of your DSP and get the most mileage out of it that you can. So additional pieces, oh, first of all, I should mention, we are using um, the piece that was cut that was three, sorry, four by three and three quarters. Okay, four by three and three quarters. So this piece of colored cardstock, this is granny apple green again, it is four and an eighth by five and three eighths. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and glue that on there. So I'll go ahead and do that. I know flowers are just the best. <laughs> I mean, and Stampin' Up! does flowers so, so well. There's a reason that there are always tons of floral, um, you know, stamps and sweets in the catalogs because Stampin' Up! is so good at them and they sell so well. So it is, uh, it's hard to say no when they're so beautiful. Now this strip of white cardstock is four and a half by four, uh, sorry, I should, it's four by one and a half. And it's going to get glued along that bottom edge. Okay, now I have embossed this with the uh pretty pretty posies maybe it's the new embossing folder i can't remember the name of it right now um it's a gorgeous gorgeous folder you honestly don't need much else <laughs> on your card um you can emboss your full card fronts with this folder and it's just beautiful okay so that gets glued along the bottom and then i have just a little strip this is a quarter inch by four so this is again how to use your scraps uh we're going to glue that right along that seam in place of ribbon Okay, so you can use cardstock in place of ribbon and it looks just fine, especially when it coordinates with your mat in behind. So I'm just going to use my grid paper here to make sure this is straight. Get that on. Okay, and then we are going to work on our arrangement. So this is where I could use my purple ones, but I don't want to because they are the wrong color for this card so I'm going to bring in some of these gorgeous larger flowers now do I have a yellow one that is a partial I bet I do oh look I do so here we go we're going to use all these little bits and pieces here so we'll do that and that and let's bring in a couple of smaller pink ones so we'll maybe add that one and then we'll add a couple of branches and we're golden so here we go. Let's glue them down. So no fussy cutting required on this one. As I said, on the first one, I did fussy cut out that um, partial spray from the DSP. These ones are all cut using the dies. So super easy. Come here, dimensionals. So I'm just going to stick this right on here and put a little bit of tape on or liquid glue on top. And we'll just overlap that just like that and then we're going to tuck our little rose in here that's great that's great betty yeah using the edge pieces is awesome because you don't want to waste it they're still beautiful images right you don't want to like lose those beautiful um images just because they're not complete so especially when you're arranging flowers um, it's easy to find ways to use little bits, right? So, all right, let's add a couple of minis to this one. And we'll pop them on. So let's add this down here. Stack it in underneath, actually. I want this to go right along the edge here. Give me your you. There we go, I like that. And let's see, we're gonna add our sentiment here and see what it looks like. Where did my sentiment go? Did I forget to do a sentiment? Oh no, it's still in my, 
still in the bag. All right, so this is gonna go on here, just like this. Okay, so again, a couple of mini dimensionals. Actually, I could probably get away with full size on this one, but that's okay. Minis are in my hand. And a little bit of liquid glue where it's going to overlap our popped flower. Again, we'll get rid of our backings. Oh, hummingbirds. Yeah, that would be awesome. You could do like a flock of hummingbirds flying onto your card from the edge to use up those partial pieces. There we go. Now that's going to get glued onto a vertically oriented card base. So again, this is four and a quarter by 11, scored in the middle at five and a half. Um, I just went with basic white. Basic white goes with everything. That's why it's called basic, right? So if you're not sure what colors work best with your DSP, uh, white is always a good choice. But then you know, I hope, that all of our DSP packs include a list of coordinating colors on the back. So that can really be a huge help when you're trying to figure out what colors will work on your project. Okay, this one needs a little bit of bling. So we're going to add, let's add a couple of these small pink ones on here. So we'll go one and two and whoops, they need to be straight. Three. There we go. How cute is that? So again, here is my A Wash and Beauty and there is my Hues of Happiness. All right, now we're going to get into the fun folds. So buckle your seat belts. Here we go. All right. So first one we're going to do is this one. This is a really easy fun fold, like really easy. Um, it's essentially two cards in one, right? You're just going to kind of layer them. So I'm going to show you how to do this. Again, all of your measurements will be in the video, in the PDF that's in the video description. So don't worry about trying to keep track of what I'm doing here. Um, and I'm not going to be able to give you all the measurements because I honestly don't remember them. So um, this is my card base. It is, I think, seven and a half by five and a half. And then it scored at four and a quarter. But don't quote me on that. As I, as I said, it'll be in the PDF. Okay, so this is how my card is going to open. Now you notice that there is a space here. Remember that five and a half by one and one eighth inch piece that we cut? So that strip is going to get glued along the right edge of our card base. So we're going to go ahead and glue that down. Pop that on. And again, I've got white on white, which is never a good scene for me. Got to make sure I can actually see the edge. There we go. Okay, so isn't that pretty just like that? Like, it's gorgeous. Um, and then I have, you could leave this just plain if you wanted to. You could stamp on it. I decided to cut a layer and emboss it. So again, this is that gorgeous embossing folder that I can't remember the name of offhand. I'm sure Louise knows. Um, and then we're going to layer that on there just to add a little bit of wow to that panel. Okay, so you could leave it plain. Uh, but why leave it plain when you can spice it up, right? So let's do that. We're going to add our embossed panel. So let's center that on there, get her straight. There we go. Okay, now isn't that pretty just as it is? Like that would be a gorgeous card base without the extra layer. So if you want to leave it there, you're good. Uh, but I did add the extra layer. So I decided to go on this one with the purple because I liked the way that it played off of, of, of this strip. Okay. You could go with white, you could go with the green, whatever works. Um, again, I don't remember the size of this piece, but it is scored in the middle. So we're going to fold it in half. Okay. It, you can use whatever color works for you. Now I am actually going to use this side, uh, because I want my arrangement of flowers to really pop on here. Okay. So I'm going to use my cross hatching side. And I'm going to go ahead and glue this onto my little mini card here. Painted posies. Thank you, Louise. See, Louise is my right-hand woman. I'm lost when you don't watch me live, Louise. <laughs> Ask them. It's never a good scene. Okay, so there we go. Now, do you remember some of those little scrappy strips that I had left over? Okay, now this is from the different DSP, but this one just happens to fit quite nicely in there. So if you wanted to um, use like this same pattern on the inside panel to have it kind of replicate, I did that on here, you can see. 
what I did. Okay. Um, that's what these little leftover scraps are for, for decorating. Okay. Now this is what this piece is going to get glued on here. Before we do that, we're going to add our white layer on the inside so that we can write inside our card. You could also stamp your sentiment if you are one who wants a sentiment on the inside. Uh, but I figure this is small enough space to write, so <laughs> I don't need a sentiment to fill it up. <laughs> so let's Excuse me. So let's add that. So this feels weird, right? Because it's backwards. So we have a forwards card and a backwards card, but they're going to hug each other like that. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and glue this guy inside our card. So you just want to make sure you're kind of centered top to bottom and side to side. I'm going to use a bit of seal for this just because it's got a little bit more heft to it. So again, we just want to make sure we're gluing this so that we're about centered. Okay. And that's the way the card's going to close like that. Okay. Now we get to decorate. So again, we're going to just pull in uh, whatever flowers we like. And on this, we have lots of options. I'm going to actually bring in the darker blue flower here. So we'll use that one. We'll probably use one of these maybe. Oh, and you know what? That'll look good up here that and what do we got we'll use a pink rose down here and maybe we'll throw in oh can we get these guys in here I bet we can oh look at that we can hide we can hide our partial purple there we go all right so let's start sticking these guys down so I'm gonna stick this guy here and hope that that's gonna work I think it will okay and we'll add this guy I think with a couple of dimensionals, just like that. We're going to add this guy right about there with a couple of dimensionals. And again, we just want to keep those dimensionals towards the center so that we can tuck bits and pieces in afterwards if we need to. So we'll go ahead and add that. And then this one is going to tuck in here right about there couple of dimensionals, we'll add that there, and I think I'm going to add this little guy up here because I can and I like it, so I will. So here we go, another little pinky, and then we need one more leaf somewhere, where are we going to put it, maybe right there, yep, right there works for me. So I'm actually just going to stick. So this is another little tip. So if you're trying to figure out how best to glue this, because it's going to overlap um, pop pieces, I'm actually just going to stick a mini dimensional in there. And then I'm going to add a bit of seal to my leaves. And then wherever it's going to, it needs to get popped, it's going to pop with the dimensional and the rest is just going to lie flat. Okay, just like that. All right, so that is that. We're going to add our sentiment. This time I used Beyond Grateful. I should mention that I stamped all of my sentiments in Early Espresso. That's actually the color that all of these flower centers are. And I just really like the way that color works um, with the flowers. So I went, it's kind of an unexpected choice for a neutral, um, but it works really well with what's going on here. So there we go. So let's pop that on there and we're done. Isn't that cute? So again, you could use one of the little strips or scraps to um, decorate the inside if you would like, but there you go. Okay, so there's my original. There's my one I just made, and let's add a bit of bling because, you know, we need to. This time, let's use some pool party. So we'll go one. Is this pool party? Maybe it's Coastal Cabana. I think it might be Coastal Cabana in these. I'm going to tuck this little guy right there. There we go. Okay. All right. Moving on. Are you guys still with me? Do you like it? Yeah, you know what, Deb? I am I am not one to do a one sheet wonder that use that aims to use as little DSP as possible. Um, I like if I'm going to use DSP and do a one sheet wonder, I want it to showcase the DSP. That's what it's all about, right? Um, so for me, if I only get seven cards rather than ten or twelve, I'm okay with that because I like the DSP to be the sort of the focal point. All right. 
So this next one is um, actually a gift card holder. You could do it just as a gatefold card, but I wanted to do something a little different. So it's tied with ribbon. And when you open it up, there is a pocket. Of course, I've got a Tim card in there. Um, but super simple, just, it's basically just a regular card base scored a little bit differently, um, but a great way to make a cute little gift card enclosure. So let's put this guy together. So this one uses that horizontal four by five and a quarter inch piece, but we're going to do a little bit of cutting. Okay. I have to remember what I'm cutting at. So I just need to cheat and look at my ruler on my grid paper underneath here. So this is one and a half and this is... Two and a half. Okay, we're good. All right, so I'm going to take my DSP piece. I'm going to cut along one, the, the long edge at one and a half. Okay, and then what did I say this one was? Was this two and a half? I don't remember. See, this is what happens when I get onto a summer vacation. <laughs> my brain goes to mush. Two and a half on this one. So one and a half and two and a half. Oh, there we go. We're golden. Okay, so there are our pieces. So then I have my card base. Let me get this out of the way. Um, that I So this is just a standard five and a half by eight and a half inch card base, but I've scored it a little bit differently. So instead of scoring at four and a quarter, where you normally would to fold your card in half, um, I've actually scored at, let me tell you, at two and three quarters and seven. Two and three quarters and seven, okay? So we're going to fold this inwards to make our sort of gatefold effects. Now you want to make sure that your pieces line up, your edges line up, because sometimes, you know, when you measure your scores, they don't quite, they're not quite precise. So you need to do a little adjusting. That's what your bone folder's for. Okay, so that's how it's going to open. Our DSP pieces, um, one is going, the larger one's going to go on the bottom. The smaller one's going to, oh, see, I cut that wrong. It's got to be one and a quarter, not one and a half. I knew I was doing something wrong. It should be one and a half or sorry, one and a quarter, not one and a half. So we will have an extra little bit of scrap here. That's right. There we go. So that one is going to go on here. And again, these measurements, the right measurements, not me <laughs> babbling incessantly, um, are going to be on the PDF. Okay. Now, if you like the florals, you can leave it as is, or you can flip. Okay. And get the, um, see both sides of the paper. I kind of like it flipped. So I'm going to do that. So we're going to glue our pieces on. We'll put our larger one along the bottom. Love, love, love the flowers. And then our smaller one is going to go along the top. I know it pains me to cover up these flowers. They're so pretty. So we'll do that. Okay, so that's how it's going to open. Now to make our pocket for our gift card, we're just going to seal up these sides. So I'm just going to take a little bit of seal and run that along the two edges there and just fold that over okay and then that gives me my pocket so that i can put my gift card in all right okay now we have this um, die cut circle this is cut using the stylish shapes dies and again i've embossed using that same gorgeous embossing folder okay thanks laurel they are pool party okay thanks for the heads up on that one um so we are going to add a little bit of ribbon first so you need about 18 inches of ribbon so this is what 17 let's just add a little bit more there we go so what we're going to do first is wrap our ribbon around okay and we just want to make sure we have enough tails here to tie okay so we're just going to wrap it about like that you want it to be in the middle I'm going to eyeball it you probably will want to measure this I'm not going to take the time to do that, but I'm going to put a little bit of adhesive right here um, to hold that in place. I'm just going to run a little bit of seal right here and stick that down. Okay. All right. Now we're going to add our circle. So again, we're going to add a little bit of adhesive, but we're not going to actually glue it yet. Um, I'm going to put a bit of adhesive along the top of my circle. Okay, so it's only along this top sort of third of the circle. And I'm going to stick this down again, centered ish, hopefully. Okay, so that is going to be my focal point on my, um, 
my card, okay? Now that I've got that down, then I can go ahead and add a little bit of adhesive here to secure the ribbon a little bit more. So we'll just put a little bit of seal and run that along there. Okay, so then that's gonna stay put. So I'm actually gonna go ahead, well I know, cause I gotta decorate the inside. So we can tie this at the end, but that's how it's going to close, okay, when you tie your ribbon. So now again, we can add some pretty flowers. What do we got? Let's do, let's do a light pink, love this. And maybe we'll add these little guys here. Mm, no, let's add these guys instead. What'll we do? Does that work? Yep, that works, we need something down here. What are we gonna put down here? Um, what do we got? Oh, I get a little bitty flower. No, that's too pink. Too much pink. Let's try. Ooh. Let's find a pool party. There we go. That's what we need. We're going to put this one here instead. I think I might put the rose on top this time. And then we'll tuck. What will we do? I think we'll use one of these guys instead. That works. Okay, here we go. A couple of dimensionals. So keeping in mind that this is going to extend off the edge of the circle a little bit. So you, again, just want to keep your dimensionals towards the middle to make sure that you don't stick your card closed. So we'll get rid of our backings. Thanks, Laura. It's a really, really quick and easy one that doesn't require any fancy anything. Just a, like really a couple different scoring measurements. They're, uh, it's a good one. And I make this one a lot, actually, because it is so easy. Now see, I broke my own rule. I should have put my dimensional on here so that when I stick this down, it doesn't bump over my flower, my larger flower. So this one's gonna tuck in behind. I'm gonna glue it flat. So this is what happens when I talk. <laughs> and try to, try to stamp and stick things down at the same time. Uh, screw up. So we'll add just a titch of glue there so that that lies flat. And then we need a couple more leaves. So let's add a little leafy there. So I'm gonna actually use a glue dot here, I think, to stick this one on. So we'll just tuck that in here, just like that. And then we need a little something down here as well. Oh, this is only a partial leaf. That one won't work, so let's put this one down here. Just like that, a couple of minis, or half minis, because that's pretty much all I have left on this sheet. It is nearly done. There we go. Okay, now for this one, I used a Just For You, because I thought that worked really well for a gift card. Um, so we're gonna add just a couple of minis on here to pop this up. This is a little bitty. Can you imagine trying to fussy cut that sentiment? Some of you I know would have a heart attack if you had to try to fussy cut that one. <laughs> okay, and then on the inside, I added, uh, because you totally deserve it. So we're gonna put that on the inside. This one I'm actually gonna glue flat, just so that it doesn't interfere with my card lying flat when I close it. So I'll put that there. Okay, and then you certainly can write something here uh, before you tuck your gift card in, or you could always tuck a little, an extra little note or a piece of cardstock in there. Okay, and then we tie up our bow here with our ribbon. And we end up with a cute little gift card enclosure. Which will go in the mail, I should add. It will fit in our standard envelopes. Can I tie a bow? Apparently not. See, this is why I tie my fake bows. <laughs> well, they're not fake bows, but you know what I mean. I do my bow hack because I really suck at tying bows when they're it's lying flat on a card. There we go. Sort of. It's not a pretty bow, but you get the idea. Okay, so there's our cute little um, gift card holder. Let me trim the tails on this a little bit so they're not quite so long. And there we go. We could certainly add a little bit of bling to this, but I'm not going to take the time to do that right now. Okay, so that is number six. We're into the last one. Now the last one 
is this awesome fun fold that I demonstrated a couple of weeks ago. Um, this Z fold pop up panel card. <laughs> Uh, it's a really long name for a really cool card. Um, and again, uses very little DSP, but because um, of the look, the way the card lays out, it looks like a lot of DSP, you know, even though it's really just narrow little strips. So let me make some room here because this is going to involve a little bit more gluing and folding. So our card base for this one, I couldn't tell you the measurements. Again, they will be in the PDF. We have two extra score lines and I'm folding in a Z fold. I didn't bring my little cheat sheet with all the measurements for this one. I have one, but I just bring it. It's in a drawer somewhere. So there is my Z. Okay, so that is going to form the foundation of my card. Now I'm using regular weight, basic white. I'm not using thick. Uh, the thick basic white is a little bit too heavy for this. Okay, so then I'm going to work my way down. Now this one I know is three and three quarters. And when you're making this fold, all of these pieces are mountain folds. All the score lines are mountain folds. Okay, so mountain, and let's get this straight. Mountain, and mountain. Okay, so what's going to happen here, I'm, I'm, I'm actually going to glue my DSP on ahead of time. So if you recall, um, when... I demonstrated this um, whenever it was, two weeks ago maybe. <laughs> um, I was using DSP that I was trying to keep a continuous pattern. For this one, I'm not. So this is a more random DSP pattern, so I'm not worrying so much about trying to keep my pieces um, in order and making sure the patterns line up. So I'm actually going to go ahead and glue my DSP pieces on as I go here. So this is 4 and 1 8 by 1 and 1 8, this piece. It's going to go on my base. So I'm going to stick that down, okay? And then on this guy, my next largest one is going to go on, okay? And it's gonna go on that center panel. Well, not center. <laughs> the second one in from the left, that's where it's going. So we're gonna go ahead and stick that down. And you'll see that they fit quite snugly in there. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and glue this on. So if you'll recall um, from, well, maybe you didn't see my demonstration when I first demonstrated this. Of course, my seal is empty. So we're just going to get a quick refill going here. Thank goodness they're nearby. So let's get that going. And pop that on, and we're back in business. And then here, I wanna make sure I put my adhesive on that little, so on the two outermost panels, okay? I also wanna make sure I have it right close to the fold. So now I'm gonna fold this under, okay? This is going to get tucked right up against, snug against that, um, the fold there. And I'm just gonna lay it flat, okay? And it pops up like that, okay? All right, next one, same thing. Mountain folds all around. Oop. So one, and two, and three, okay. So same deal, I'm gonna adhere my DSP. I'm gonna do it this way, I think, because I think that's right side up. So we'll pop that on there. Just like that. And then again, same thing, we're gonna apply our adhesive on the two uttermost panels, fold that under, snug it right up, and again, you just want to make sure it's centered, and stick it down. Okay, isn't that beautiful? Oh, I love this paper so much. <laughs> All right, and then next, we're just kind of working our way down. Um, the thing with this is you just want to make sure that your score lines are burnished really well. Um, and if you can, if you're not doing a continuous DSP pattern, um, which you can't do with this um, one sheet wonder, it won't be a continuous pattern. Um, just make sure that your pieces are lining up, your image is lining up. Okay, and then a little, I've got dimensional backings like everywhere. <laughs> Look, it's like confetti. All right, again, fold this one under, line it up. Sticker flat. Okay, 
And then the last one, this little bitty one, this is the hardest one because you have narrower um, pieces to apply your adhesive, or narrower sections to apply your adhesive to on this one end. So this end, I'm actually gonna use some liquid glue. Actually, before I do that, let's put on our DSP. So we'll pop that on, which way is this going? This is going, which way is this going? Gotta think about it. It's going this way. So we'll pop that one on like that. Okay, and then I'm gonna put a little bit of liquid glue along this, just because it's so narrow, it's really hard to control where the seal goes. So again, we tuck that under, we're gonna center that, make sure it's straight, and stick it down. Okay, now that just needs a second for the seal to set up, but that's the way it folds to go into your envelope. And that's it, it's a really, it's not a hard fun fold, like it's just a whole lot of little squares and um, scoring. Okay, so then we can arrange some flowers. So let's use a big yellow, let's use the darker yellow. Ooh, that's pretty. So we use one of those, let's use, see this one has a little bit of everything, which is great. So we'll maybe add a little, no, let's do a, let's do these guys. We're gonna add them in here, or maybe up here. Yep, up there works. And what else have we got? Maybe a pink rose, just like that. Yep, that works for me. So we're gonna add a little bit of seal here, and this is just going to get stuck to this topmost piece. And then we're going to add our little pink rose, same deal, it's going to get stuck just to the top part. Just about there. Okay. Now this guy, I am going to pop up, even though that is going to add a little, well, no, maybe I better not. Just to be on the safe side, we won't pop it because we don't want to add too much thickness. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, and then I really feel like we need something under here. So what can we do? Well, it's gonna be too big. Oh, that'll work. Let's tuck that one in there. Actually, no, it's gotta be right side up. That's gonna bug me. Can't do that. Hang on, what do we got? No, we need a dark purple. I need more dark purple. Okay, we'll use a rose. No, we'll go back to the original plan. This one works. I can live with that. Even though I'm not gonna see much of the leaves, that's okay. All right, so let's stick this guy on. It's gonna kind of be on the second step there, okay? And then again, we're gonna add a couple of extra leaves. So we'll tuck, ooh, look at that. See how this leaf is cut off? I'm gonna line that up right with the edge of my card and it's gonna look like it was, it was supposed to be there. There you go, another little tip. How to use every last little image on your pretty paper. There you go. And one more little leafy down here. So we'll add again a bit of liquid glue. I'm not popping anything on this one up. Again, just because I don't want to add too much bulk and thickness because it is already fairly bulky because of all the layering. Okay, so there's that, our sentiment on this one. Where'd you go, sentiment? There you are. Wishing you everything wonderful. So that's gonna get glued just at the edge here. And I'm going to adhere it just where my two flowers meet. Let's just put that actually a little higher because I wanna see more of that darker purple peeking out. And there you go, there's your finished card. Isn't that pretty? Love it. All right, let me get all of these leftover. Look at all these leftover die cut flowers I have to play with on other projects. <laughs> so much fun. All right, you guys, that's it. Seven cards, three fun folds, including three fun folds, all from one 12 by 12 piece of designer series paper. Okay, I hope you like that. Um, thank you for hanging out with me for an extra long live at five tonight and celebrating the start of my summer vacation. I am so relieved to be done. Um, and again, I will post the PDF that has all of the measurements for all the extra pieces, as well as the cutting layout, um, for the one sheet wonder in the video description as soon as I'm done and done. So I would say probably seven ish. Okay. 
All right, everybody. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you have a great day. Enjoy. For those of us in Canada, enjoy Canada Day this weekend. Uh, for our U.S. friends, happy Independence Day, um, 4th of July on Monday. Big celebrations this week. And of course, this Friday, Canada Day is also the launch of Celebration 2.0 and our new holiday catalog. So stay tuned. I will probably pop on live at some point this weekend. Okay? All right, everybody, have a great evening, and I will see you next time for another episode of Tuesday Live at 5. Bye for now.